Alright everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to do one thing and one thing only. Try and show once and for all to you guys that I know my shit about rugby. Okay, we're going to go with a trivia quiz. The last video was three NFL trivia quizzes. I went from good to average to terrible. Today we're going to do three more, I assume. Rugby history. T test your rugby history knowledge. See if you can beat your mates. Alright then. Let's go rugby history. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is... How many... Oh my god. How many successful defences did Southland have of the Ranfurly Shield from 38 to 47? Well, Southland is a New Zealand team. Oh my god, look at these bloody questions. This is in impossible. Okay, let's go um, Southland. There must have been a bit of a dynasty team. That was over the Second World War. Let's go four. Who won the first NPC competition in 19... I should probably explain what the Ranfurly Shield is, right? The Ranfurly Shield is a shield that is passed over to basically the linear champion each year in... Uh, the NPC, which is the National Provincial Championship. That's a national rugby competition in, in New Zealand. Um, there's two divisions now. The Ranfurly Shield is only in the top division of about 12 teams. Then there's a secondary division of about another 12 teams. So the Ranfurly Shield, each season, a team will have it. Each home game that they play, the opposition that come to their home ground have the opportunity to win the Ranfurly Shield away. The Ranfurly Shield stays in your home ground, okay? If you go away and play away, you've, you, you don't have a risk of losing it. But every home game that season, you do. So, you know, it can switch from, from hand to hand um, throughout the season. And uh, the Ranfurly Shield is pretty, pretty special to New Zealand rugby. So, who won the first NPC competition in 1976? Well, I'm from Canterbury. I love Canterbury. We're going to have to go Canterbury. Who has been the heaviest All Black? Isatolo Maka, I don't know him, I know Craig Dowd, Case Muse, Mark Cooksley, Colin Meads. Craig Dowd, he was a monster, wasn't he? Mm. I'll have to go Craig Dowd. Who is the oldest ever All Black? Frank Bunce, he must have played to he was about 35. Fitzpatrick was, geez, he was there for ages. I, I, I guarantee this is going to be a trick question, so I'm just going to go Fitzpatrick. He was, uh, he was an all-black captain in the early 90s. Who was the left wing for the Blues in the 97 Super 12 final? It's got to be Baderi. Joali Baderi. I've made a highlight video of his. If you want to check him out, go to my channel. Who has the most points on debut for the all-blacks? I believe... I believe... That was Carlos Spencer, the King Carlos. I've also got a, a, um, a highlight video of him on my channel, so be sure to check that out. They call him the King, King Carlos. Where was Scott McLeod born? Scott McLeod. I wouldn't have a clue. I'm going to have to say Hamilton. How many tries did John Kerwin score in first class rugby? Now that's a trick question. Everyone knows how many tries he scored for the All Blacks. But how many tries did he score in first class rugby as a whole? I'm going to have to go 100, 100 and, 145. I mean, anything above that is just insane. How many double All Blacks? How many double All Blacks had? What? That doesn't make sense. How many... What? How many double All Blacks had... That does not make sense one bit. We're going to have to go five. Where did the Black Ferns finish in the 1991 World Cup? The Black Ferns are the New Zealand women's rugby team. And uh, I'm going to have to say first. This is a hard quiz, mate. What have I got? What? What? This is a very bad quiz. I got no points. You are fucking joking, right? Right. Right. 
sorry about that guys. The All Black Rugby Quiz. Developed in 2011. Cricket and rugby. How, how much do you really know which rugby league? You know what? These are fucking shit. Rugby trivia quiz. Rugby mixed trivia questions and answers. Okay. I'm just going to go down the list and try and answer some. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I've already seen a couple here, but we're going to we're going to go down to number four. Which Springbok scored four tries against Ireland in Bloemfontein in 1998? I would say Percy Montgomery. No, Stefan to Blanche. Okay. Which winger was named Billy Wiz and scored England's only try when the team won the Rugby Union World Cup in 2003? Billy Wiz. Well, it was either Jason Robinson or Ben Cohen. I believe it was Ben Cohen. Jason Robinson. He is an absolute legend. You, got, you guys want to see a, basically one of the best sidesteppers in world rugby history. He's not from New Zealand, he's from England. Jason Robinson. Look him up, mate. It's absolute magic. What have we got here? Connaught Rugby... Oh, fuck. Connaught Rugby are based in Galway, County Galway, Ireland. But which multi-purpose grounds do they play their home games at? Gaelic football? Aviva Stadium. Sports ground. The fuck? That's the worst question ever. Who is credited with inventing rugby union? Um, Jacob McDonald. William Webb Ellis. I should have known that. That's the Rugby World Cup trophy. You guys have got the Lombardi trophy for the Super Bowl. We've got the William Webb Ellis trophy for the, uh, the World Cup, which is played every four years. I won 29 tests for my country, mainly in the 70s, played 20 times for the Barbarians, 20 times, and went on two Lions tours. I was the first ever substitute used in international rugby. Um, no, it's a bit before my time. Who was it? No, we've got, we've got three... We've got four uh, options here, and I don't know any of them. Phil Bennett. The referee stopped play because a player was in touch. What did the referee spot? He spotted his foot go out. He, he spotted his foot going out over the line. A player holding the ball had stepped over the sideline. Right. Okay. Which team won... Sorry, I didn't look. Which team won the 2007 Hong Kong Sevens? Well, I've got to say New Zealand, but I, I really don't know. Samoa. Not surprised. A scissor is a move commonly used by the back line. A scissor can also be called a cut or an X move. A loop, a skip, a cock, or a switch. A switch. A scissor is also called a switch because the ball carrier will end up switching places with the player that he or she is passing to. Really? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which set-piece set play is used in Rugby Union that does not feature in Rugby League? That would have to be a line-out. Yes. Who was the top try scorer of the 2003 Super 12 tournament? That would have to be... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rupeni Thauthau and Booker. And I've got a highlight video of his on my channel too, so check that out. It's got to be Rupeni. Doug Howlett! Oh fuck, well, I mean I've got a highlight video of him too. Check it out, Dougie Howlett, he's a flyer. T 12 tries in 13 games. I swear, Rupeni Thauthau must have been close. This person is an important link between forwards and backs. They play an important role in scrums, lineouts, and a lot of plays. Who is it? It is the number eight. No, it's not. The scrum half. <laughs> Well, it was either going to be the number eight or the scrum half. But, uh, you know, I probably should have got that, actually. That's terrible on my part. One of the rarest of rugby union books is the New Zealand Tour 1901 by J.R. Henderson. Which team, tour, which team tour to New Zealand does it deal with? It's 
got to be the Lions. The New South Wales team. Jeepers creepers. Two copies still in existence. On April 16th, 2004, the Stormers beat the Blues in New Zealand in a Super 12 encounter. When was the last time this happened? Fuck, I don't know, 98? 2000. We are usually the heaviest member of the team, and there are two of us, a loose head and a tight head. What position am I? You are a prop. Which of these players was not a British Lions tourist in 2001? Tom Smith, Ronan O'Gara, Johnny Wilkinson, Greg Smith. Tom Smith. No. Whoops. Who was the munch? I wouldn't have known that. Mickey Skinner. What was the name of a famous rugby ground in Dublin? Um... Uh, what is it? Jeez, I should know this. I should know this, guys, but I don't. Lansdowne Road. I, I didn't know that. In 1986, which All Black hooker was selected for the Test match against France, was injured, replaced by Sean Fitzpatrick, and never played a Test match? Oh, no. No, I wouldn't have a clue. Bruce Samara, nah, no, fuck, no way. Where did Jeff Wilson make his All Black debut? Well, I've got a highlight video of Jeff Wilson too, so check that out. <laughs> um, oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Carisbrook in Dunedin. No, nope, Murrayfield, Scotland. In the 1999 World Cup semi-final game between Australia and South Africa, fry half mm. Ste Stephen Larkin kicked a 48 metre drop goal to help seal the victory for the Australian team. What was remarkable about the kick? He scored a 48 metre drop goal. What was remarkable about the kick? I don't know, let's find out. What was it? Um, I don't know. He had, oh well, okay. He had poor vision and could hardly see the posts. Larkham had very bad eyesight and could not see the post clearly. Two factors made this drop kick quite a miracle kick. He also had a badly injured knee at the time. Shit. <laughs> My God. See, that's exactly how I feel when I play uh, rugby or any sport without glasses or without contacts. Clearly I can't wear these, so I put contact lenses in, but if I tried to play rugby without contacts, it's not happening. I can't. In the 1999 World Cup, South African fly half Gianni De Beer slotted five drop goals to knock England out of the World Cup. South Africa was then undone by a drop kick from which Australian fly half in extra time in the semi-final match? Well, they just gave me the fucking answer. <laughs> It was uh, Stephen Larkham. <laughs> Who scored the winning drop goal in the 1995 World Cup final? That was Joel Stransky. Got it. Page number two. I think I'll do two pages. Ah. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I missed that one too. Okay, Limerick. Limerick, your lady goes the song. Where would you find the Munster rugby team on a Friday night if you were in Limerick? The Sinbin, perhaps? Oh, I wouldn't have had a clue what that one was. Which England rugby star is nicknamed the Enforcer? Uh, that would be... That would be... Martin Johnson. No, Danny Grucock. <laughs> he is known as a fighter. Oh no, you don't want to play against a guy like that. 312 points in 28 appearances for my country. I spent the last years of my club career playing in Italy. Hmm. That's a tough one. I would assume he's from New Zealand. 
but I don't know. Oh no, we've got we've got some uh, some names here. David Campisi, no, it wasn't him. Michael Liner, it wasn't him. Although no, it could have been actually because he was a kicker. He must have been a kicker to score that many points in that many games. So I'd say Michael Liner. No, nope. Nas Botter. Which of these four rugby union terms is not a way to either start or restart play? A knock-on. A knock-on is when you drop the ball. That stops the play, not starts it. Who lost the bowl final in the Hong Kong Rugby Sevens 2007? Fucked if I know. Namibia? France. Which of these players is not involved in the scrum? The prop, the scrum half, the number eight, or the wing? It would be the wing. Completely away from the scrum, right out on the wings. You've got one on the right and one on the left, and I like to play right wing. And it's the wing. The number worn by a rugby player often tells you the position he or she plays. What position is the player who wears number four on their jersey? Well, that would be the lock. When the ball has crossed the sideline, it is said to be what? In touch. Well, I, I, I actually looked at it, but I knew that one. Okay? Trust me. Which South African franchise played in the finals of the first Super 12 tournament? Well, it would have either been the Stormers, the Cats, the Sharks. Stormers, Sharks, Cats. Let's have a look. The Sharks. They were called Natal, the Natal Sharks. Okay, there are some positions where there are usually two people for a position. Example, there are two flankers. Which of these positions is only played by one person? Prop, lock, wing, or fly half? There's only one fly half. The two props are at the front of the scrum. The two locks are behind the two props, locking the scrum together. The two wings, like I said, are out on the sides. And the fly half is the one that, he's basically the playmaker. He's kind of like the quarterback in the game of rugby. You know, he'll grab the ball, he'll either pass it, he'll run it, or he'll kick it. Oh shit, the proliferant rugby, British rugby writer JBG Thomas wrote 30 books on the sport. Which was the first? I have no idea. On tour. Who did Nick Mallett replace as Springbok coach in 1997? Not a clue. Corel Duplessis. I am usually the player who throws the ball in at lineouts, and I also play a crucial part in winning scrums. What position am I? The hooker. So we talked about the two props at the front of the scrum and the two locks behind. The one in the middle of the two props is the hooker. I would not want to be a hooker, that's for sure. There we go, the hooker. And the hooker is called that because it's his principal job to hook the ball back with his foot. The scrum half puts it in. The two, the, two, the two teams are going like this, they lock together, there's a space underneath, the scrum half puts the ball in. It's these two guys at the front who then try and hook the ball back uh, to, for their scrum half to, uh, to collect, then pass it out to the fly half. And there you go. Which famous Irish province caused one of the greatest upsets of all time, defeating the 1978 All Blacks on their tour of the British Isles? I would say Munster but I believe it was someone else. No, it was Munster. Huh. Who was the POW Rocket? The POW Rocket? I don't know. Philip Burnett Sully, who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? If I were at the Cabbage Patch, where would I be? Never heard of it before. It must be a stadium. Twickenham. I've never heard Twickenham be called the Cabbage Patch. <laughs> Which country have brothers Manu, Elisi, Kappa, Philemi and Fial all played Test Rugby for? Well, I'd have to say Samoa. Tonga! Okay. <laughs> what Super 12... What Super 12 team did... What Super 12 did does Joe Nalomi play for in 2012, 2002 when he played his last game as an All Black? That would have to be the Hurricanes. Got it. 
Oh my god, the spelling. From 2000 to 3003, that's fantastic. Which South African fly half broke the record at the time for drop goals by kicking five drop goals in the 1999 World Cup quarter-final match against England? Well, I would have to say, I would have to say, Stefan de Blanche, Johnny de Beer. John Eels played 86 test matches for Australia and amassed 173 points in his career. He scored two tries and kicked 34 penalties and 31 conversions. Why was this remarkable? It was remarkable because he played lock, and we talked about it, lock. The lock is the tallest guy on the field and he's in the scrum. He shouldn't be kicking. He was a lock forward. Which Australian scrum half retired after appearing 139 times for his country? George Gregan. Yep, absolute legend. Which Australian player tackled Jeff Wilson in the dying seconds of the 1994 Bledisloe Cup match to deny the All Blacks the win? Well, I'll never forget it, and it was George Gregan. We just heard about him. <laughs> Which Wallabies player put in a famous try-saving tackle on Jeff Wilson in the 1996 Bledisloe Cup? Well, I don't know if it was George Gregan again, but I'm going to go I'm going to go <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm going to go uh... David Campisi. No, 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 it wouldn't have been Campisi. Um Let's go. Oh my god. Wendell Sailor. George Gregan again. What the fuck? <laughs> they just said, this is terrible. They just said the 94 Bledisloe Cup match. And now they're saying the 96 Bledisloe Cup match. I'm sure he didn't do that twice. I'm sure. Alright, let's continue. Couple more, couple more. In rugby union, hang on. I retired at the age of 25 after earning 25 caps for my country in which I scored 6 tries, 3 conversions, 8 penalties and 8 drop goals. Barry John, Carwin James, Tony Ward or Mark Eller? The only one I know is Mark Eller, I've got to say him. Yes, yes it was. He never really explained why he retired before arguably reaching his peak. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. Why did he retire at 25? If a rugby player refers to a fly half, what is he talking about? He's talking about the first 5 8 the number 10, the playmaker, a playing position. Right. That's right. Which team knocked England out of the cup? What the fuck kind of, what the, what the fuck kind of question is that? When? What cup? What are you talking about? In the Hong Kong Sevens. <laughs> oh my god. When the ball is dropped forward, it's called a knock-on. A knock-on. The ball, the play is stopped, and the ball is given to the opposition team. You do not want to drop the ball forwards in rugby. Wearing the numbers one and three, these two very large members of the team are the real muscle instability in the scrum, and may in fact be the strongest members of the squad. What is the name of this percent? Props. Alright guys, we're going to call it a day there. That was, that was a bit of fun. That was a bit of fun. Any of those players that I mentioned that I have highlight videos for, seriously, go and check them out. Go into the playlist called Rugby Related Videos. Um, I'm planning on putting together a few more. I really enjoyed putting them together. And look, if there's one that I want you to watch, guys, it's Jonah Lomu. Go and watch my tribute video to Jonah Lomu. Every single time I watch it, I, I burst into tears. I can't help it, man. So, you know, he was... He was my rugby hero, forever, and he always will be. So, by all means, go and check them out. I think we, we heard about Carlos Spencer, we heard about Doug Howlett, we heard about Jeff Wilson, we heard about Jonah Lomu, we heard Carl, who, who was, I think that was it actually, but there's plenty more, so by all means, go to that playlist, check them out. I'm not sure if I actually got the best, you know, rugby related quiz. I think the next one we might do will be a New Zealand based quiz. 
New Zealand rugby or possibly Southern Hemisphere rugby because you know Northern Hemisphere rugby I've got to admit I haven't paid a huge amount of attention to because they're not as good and I'll leave you with that. Peace out everybody.